Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, June 30th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday, Major League Baseball. First up, the Roku game at 11.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. we got the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Atlanta Braves. We're going to see Bailey Falter and Spencer Schwellenbach as the starters. The Schwellenbach has struggled so far in his first few games at the Major League level, but I actually like this spot here for the Braves' bats. I think that even if Schwellenbach gives up a few runs early, I think he's going to get some run support. And then it comes down to, I trust the Braves' bullpen a lot more in this matchup. You know, Bailey Falter, we've mentioned the regression concerns. We're starting to see it. That last game against the Reds, it was four innings, four earned runs, five total runs, only two strikeouts. The Braves have been decent against left-handed pitching. I like Atlanta and this one on the run line at home. Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Garrett Cole and Kevin Gaussman are your starters. There's no doubting that Garrett Cole has struggled so far in his first two games back from injury, but I think he actually pitched pretty well against the Orioles in that first one, made a couple of mistake pitches Otherwise, I thought it was a decent outing. The next game obviously really struggled against the New York Mets, but that's a Mets team that was playing really well going into that game. They obviously, you know, Subway Series rivalry game. And Cole has struggled against the Mets throughout his career, especially as a Yankee. So there was not, you know, I mean, the Mets, they got to give him credit. They played really well in that game. But I, I think going forward, Garrett Cole's still one of the best options in the American League. And I know at this point in the year, it's not too relevant to look at last year's numbers. But I think it's noteworthy to mention when you look at how dominant Garrett Cole was against these Blue Jays in 2023. He faced them four different times, 28 and two-thirds innings with a .31 ERA. He gave up one run in those four starts combined. And I, I do think he's going to get back to form. It's not like Kevin Gossman on his side has been outstanding, untouchable. I mean, his last two starts, he's given up four home runs. We saw the Yankees get going offensively on Friday at a huge day. I think they can back up Cole in this one. I'm going to go with the New York Yankees on the money line in this one. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. We're going to see Ranger Suarez and Yanni Chirinos as your projected starters. Yanni Chirinos has pitched well in his first two games at the Major League level this year, but I do expect regression going forward. And even with Harper and Schwarber on the IL, I still think the Phillies are the much better lineup, the much better starting pitcher, and the much better bullpen in this game. Phillies are big favorites for a reason, but I got to go with Philadelphia and lay the one and a half runs and potentially two and a half runs in this one. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Boston Red Sox. Matt Waldron and Josh Winkowski are your starters. I think there's an interesting game here. I think both these lamps really solid against right in and pitching in the last month. Strong bullpen options. I think the Red Sox bullpen has been one of the best and more underrated bullpens in baseball. However, I do trust Matt Waldron more as a starting pitcher in this game. I think both good, you know, good options to start this one, but Winkowski's been mostly featured as a reliever, long reliever, like we saw in that last game against the Blue Jays. And you know, it's just not the same. When you in, in that game, Toronto was up big in that one early, and the Red Sox needed some innings from a guy like Winkowski. He really didn't have any pressure on him. And now as a starting pitcher, it's just a much different game. Waldron's been excellent on the road. You know, he's got a sub three ERA, a two eleven points batting average in 50 innings of work only giving up three home runs on the road this year, which we know is key when you're pitching at Fenway Park. So I trust Waldron more as a starter in this game, and that's why I'm going to go with the Padres and the money line. Next up, the Houston Astros taking on the New York Mets. We're going to see Luis Severino for the Mets, no official starter for Houston. We'll have to wait and see who they go with, but I'm going to lean towards the Mets right now. I mean, Severino is pitching really well. He's been rather inconsistent. We've seen him give up a lot of sharp contact at times, but he's pitched well at City Field. The Mets lineup is backing him up. The bullpen's improved, and I think the Mets are just tough to go against, especially when they're playing at City Field right now. So I'm going to lean towards the Mets on the money line. Next up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Patrick Corbett and Taj Bradley are your starters. To me, it's the lopsided pitching matchup. Bradley's been excellent at Tropicana Field. Another good home start in that last game against the Mariners. Five and a third innings, one run, eight strikeouts. Had some walks, you know, four walks in that one, but still three to two Rays victory over a strong Mariners team that's you know, currently leading the AL West. Now you're facing the Nationals and Patrick Corbin. You know, Corbin's been better recently, but I still don't think he's a great option. The Rays have been decent against lefties. They were able to get to Parker for a few runs at the beginning of this series for a win. I think they get to Corbin for a win and run line cover. So give me the Rays on the run line laying the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. We're going to see Kyle Hendricks and Freddie Peralta as the projected starters. 
you know, Kyle Hendricks has really found his game again. You look at that ERA at 6.87, it's pretty ugly on paper, but in the month of June, he's gone 21 in the third innings with a 1.27 ERA, a 50% ground ball percentage, exactly what you want to see from a guy like Hendricks. And, you know, he was pitching out of the bullpen. He found his game. They brought him back in the rotation. His first two starts back were against the same lineup, which we know is never easy to do. A solid lineup in the San Francisco Giants. He went 12 and two-thirds combined of three-run ball. I think he pitches pretty well in this game, and I think he gets some run support at least early. I'm going to take the Cubs in the first five innings. You know, Peralta just hasn't been the same recently. Now, the ERA is still above four. He's had a few good outings in between, but we saw that one game against Cincinnati, six earned runs given up at home. Even the last game against the Rangers, it was a win. It was five innings, two runs, but just didn't look as sharp as we've seen from Peralta. He's also not pitching deep into games too often. So give me the Cubs in the first five in this one. Next up, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Kansas City Royals. Seth Lugo for Kansas City. Logan Allen on the other side. You know, Lugo struggled against these Guardians back on June 4th. He gave up five earned runs, two home runs in that one, and six innings of work. I do think he's much sharper in this one, though, and I still think the Guardians can find a few runs off him, but I like the fact that he's very efficient, doesn't necessarily need strikeouts to get outs, which is important because Cleveland does a great job of limiting strikeouts, so you can't really rely on those missed bats when you're facing them. Logan Allen's not been great this year, and even though he's been better on the road, it's not been by much. He still has an ERA above five on the road. The Royals are hitting lefties, especially well at Kauffman Stadium this season. I like the way their offense has played in this series thus far, so I'm going to go with the Royals in this game on the money line. Next up, the Cincinnati Reds taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Hunter Green and Lance Lynn are your starters. Lance Lynn has been tough to read, not only this season, but throughout his career. We, you know, he's been inconsistent this year. And in the month of June, I mean, you saw in the, la- the game against the Marlins on June 18th, five earned runs, 10 base hits. The next game, he bounces back against the Braves, a much tougher lineup, six and two-thirds innings of one-run ball in a 4-3 to Cardinals victory. Now, the Cardinals are 4-1 and one in his last five games. He's been pretty pro- profitable recently. He's improved at Bush Stadium. He didn't pitch too well there earlier in the year, but I, I think Lance Lynn pitches well in this one. I mean, I think he's the better option, at least right now, in terms of their current form. I think Hunter Green, you know, six earned runs given up in that last start against Pittsburgh. He's been put through a really tough uh, schedule this year because he's had to face so many lineups in back-to-back games. But I still think that if this is a close game late, I trust the Cardinals' bullpen more, and I got to go with St. Louis in this game on the money line. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the San Francisco Giants. James Paxton for the Dodgers, no official starter for San Francisco. Now, I definitely got to give credit to James Paxton. I think he's trending in the right direction, but uh, still, when you look at the expected numbers overall this season, he's got a uh, 3.39 ERA, but a 4.47 expected ERA, 5.17 XFIP. You know, the Giants have been really good against left-handed pitching pretty much overall this season, but in the last month, so... While he's trending in the right direction, his strikeout numbers are going up. The walks haven't been necessarily as big an issue as they were at the beginning of the year. He's still not somebody I'm looking to back very often right now. And I like the Giants in this matchup. I, you know, We'll have to wait and see who San Francisco goes with as a starter. But I'm going to go with the Giants in this game on the money line. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Casey Mize and Tyler Anderson are your starting pitchers. And while I've mentioned quite a few times recently that I don't love either of these offenses right now, I still like the over in this game. That's how much I don't love either starting pitching option in this matchup. You know, Casey Mize, you know, he had 10 strikeouts in that last game against Philadelphia. But to me, that was the only positive sign because he still gave up nine base hits, four total runs, three of those were earned, a home run. He only went four and a third innings. He's just not pitching well this year, in my opinion. And I think the Angels get to him early. And, and then you look at the other side, Tyler Anderson, who we've mentioned the big time regression concerns. You know, one of the starting pitchers I'm looking at regression most this right now in Major League Baseball because his strikeout rate is not great. His walks are, you know, piling up. We saw five walks in that last game against Oakland, and he struggled against the A's. He went five innings, three runs, a home run, five walks, only the two strikeouts, and that was against an Oakland A's team that's been miserable recently. So that final that final score was 7-5 to five in that one. I could see a very similar scoreline in this one. I'm going to go with the over in Detroit, Los Angeles. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the Seattle Mariners. Joe Ryan for Minnesota, no official starter for the home team. Joe Ryan, I've mentioned, he's pitched well this year, and throughout his career, he usually has that one bad inning, similar to a guy like Aaron Nola, where maybe makes a mistake pitch, gives up a home run, solo shot or two, but otherwise is pretty strong. And we saw that in the last game against Arizona. He had the first two innings, struggled to get through the order, gave up two runs apiece. Outside of that, he was sharp. He went six innings, it's a four-run ball, and was able to give Minnesota a chance in that. When they made a comeback, they actually tied the game in the seventh inning, but couldn't find the win in the end. 
I think Joe Ryan pitches well in this one, especially in a pitcher-friendly ballpark. We'll have to see who Seattle starts, but I like the way the Twins are hitting the ball right now. I like their bullpen. I'm going to go with Minnesota in this one, the money line. Next up, the Oakland Athletics taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Luis Medina and Brandon Fott are your starters. If Brandon Fott was good enough in that last game for the Diamondbacks. He, he was opposite Joe Ryan in that game we just talked about. Six and a third innings, four earned runs from Fott. He hasn't been great this season, but the Diamondbacks, I do think, are going to give him some run support early in this one. Medina has not pitched too well either. An ERA above five. We saw four earned runs early in that last game against the Angels in a 5-1 Oakland loss. And the o Oakland A's are 1-4 or and four in Medina's last five games. So, I got to go Arizona in this one on the run line. And the final game we're to talk about for the Sunday card in Major League Baseball. It's the Sunday night baseball contest on ESPN between the Texas Rangers and the Baltimore Orioles. Andrew Heaney and Cole Irvin, a pair of lefties on the mound in this one. I like the Rangers in the first five innings of this one. I think Heaney's been a lot better recently. You know, obviously, it's not been a great season for him. And when you look at the profit, you know, he's 2-9 and nine win loss record this season. The Rangers have lost a large majority of his starts. He's been one of the least profitable pitchers in baseball in terms of money line betting. But I think he's been a lot more competitive on the mound. He's given him three runs or fewer in each of his last five starts. His strikeout numbers have been a bit inconsistent, which I don't love. But I still think when you look at Cole Irvin on the other side, you know, he has not pitched too well in the month of June. He's given up a lot of base runners, a lot of sharp contact. He's got an ERA above five. The Rangers have been solid against left-handed pitching in the last 30 days. I don't love that Rangers bullpen, but I still think they win this game in the end you know, in terms of the full game money line. But I'm going to also take the Rangers in the first five money line in this one. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.